In this example, we're going to look at our iPad sample Wilcoxon signed rank test. Let's take a look at the question. In a comparison of two computerised methods A and B for measuring physical fitness, a random sample of eight people was assessed by both methods. Their scores, a maximum of 20, were recorded as follows. User Wilcoxon signed rank test at the 5% level of significance to test whether the claim that method A gives a lower measure of fitness than method B is justified. A couple of things to point out in this question. It specifies that the scores had a maximum of 20 in the question. The reason they tell you that is so that we can make the assumption that the data is symmetrical around the population median. Remember, to use a Wilcoxon, we have to make that assumption. If we don't know what the maximum score was, we don't know if we can have a symmetrical data set. So, for a hypothesis test, we have six steps. We write our hypotheses, we state if it is one or two tailed, we state the significance level, calculate the test statistic, find the critical region and compare and conclude. So let's start with our hypotheses. We always have a H0 null hypothesis and H1 alternative hypothesis. For a Wilcoxon signed rank test, we use E to D. And remember that that N is the Greek letter eta, which represents the population average. And so E to D is the population average difference. Our null hypothesis for one sample Wilcoxon is always that the population average difference is zero. There is no difference between the two methods in this case. Our alternative hypothesis for this one, again, we need to use E to D, the population average difference, but we need to have a look at what the question is asking us. They want us to test the claim that method A gives a lower measure of fitness than method B. So thinking about that inequality, we need method A to be less than method B. That's what we we're trying to prove right or wrong. And rearranging that equation will tell me that method A take where method B is less than zero. So I'm going to use the inequality E to D is less than zero. And to calculate my differences, I'm going to do A take away B. That order is important, which is why I've had to work that out. I could also write that E to D was greater than zero, but I would have to do B take away A instead. So next on our list is one or two tailed and the significance level. So to find out if it's one or two tailed, we are going to use our hypotheses that we have written. Our H1 was that ND is less than zero, or sorry, E to D is less than zero, and therefore that makes it one tailed. We're just caring about that lower end. The significance level, we are asking the question to use 5%, so that is what I'm going to do. Then comes the test statistic. This is worth the most marks part of the question, so we need to work this out carefully. To work out the test statistic for a paired Will sample Wilcoxon sign rank test, we need to follow four steps. The first one is to work out the signed difference for each pair of data. Now, if you remember from our H1, we said we're going to use A take away B, so I'm going to do that for each subject. So 11.2 take away 10.4 is positive 0.8, negative 3.5, negative 2.6, positive 1.7, negative 2.4, 0 because they're the same, negative 3 and negative 2.2. Step two is to rank these differences from closest to zero to furthest away. Obviously, if they have a difference of zero, we can't use that to help us in our hypothesis test. So unfortunately, subject number six has to be discounted. So I put an X next to him or her because uh, I can't use that data in my hypothesis test. Then I want to find the number that's closest to zero. So I think that is plus 0.8. So that's going to get a rank one. Then if we look quickly, I think it's 1.7 is going to be rank 2. 2.2 will be rank 3. 2.4, rank 4. 2.6, rank 5. 3, rank 7. And 3.5, rank 8, 7. Sorry, oh, 6 and 7. Then step C or step 3 is to calculate the total for the positive and the negative ranks. So personally, I choose to highlight or draw a box around the positive ranks just so I can differentiate them. And then I can easily add that rank 1 and 2 to give me a T plus total of 3. And then I'm left with 7, 5, 4, 6 and 3, 
which adds up to 25. So my final step is identifying the test statistic, which is the smallest of the rank totals. So for this question, it is 3. Step 5 then is finding the critical region. To find the critical region, I need my value of n. In this question, we had n is 8. However, remember subject 6 had a difference of 0, so we couldn't use him. So that reduces my n to 7. That's really important that you don't miss that out. So if I turn to my statistical tables, table 10 towards the back of the booklet, the penultimate one, I have a one-tailed test at the 5% level of significance and n is 7. Therefore, my critical value is 4 and my critical region is less than or equal to 4. So to compare and conclude, I'm going to draw my line from 0 to infinity. I'm going to identify that critical value and that critical region on that line. So anything in that red region is the critical region, the reject region. And my test statistic was 3, which comes just before 4. And therefore we are rejecting H0. So to make my conclusion, I just need to go back to the question and make sure I'm using the correct wording to answer it in context. It asked me to use a Wilcoxon signed rank test at the 5% level of significance to test whether the claim that method A gives a lower measure of fitness than method B is justified. We are rejecting H0. That means that the null hypothesis is not correct or we haven't got enough evidence for that. So therefore we cannot say that the difference is zero and therefore we are justifying that claim. So in context, therefore, there is significant evidence to suggest that the claim that method A gives a lower measure of fitness than method B is justified.